rocket flares and spiral stairs. Happy Good Friday. I used to feel really weird saying that because like somebody died today, but come on, it's good. Let's talk about why. So we're in a four part series called Jesus Blank. And we've been tackling different activities that Jesus did throughout his life and ministry. And throughout the first three parts, you should go watch them. We've talked about how Jesus came, Jesus taught, and Jesus served. And in all of these activities, we've talked about how it's not only important how or why Jesus did these things, but in everything that Jesus did, he was pointing to something much much bigger. And today is no different. What better day than Good Friday to talk about how Jesus died? If you're a subscriber to this channel, then you're probably familiar with how and why Jesus died. He died on the cross to save us from our sins. But my hope is that even if you've known this your entire life, that today you might discover a new and deeper understanding for just how meaningful Jesus' death was. Jesus is going to be your homeboy by the end of this one. Let's start at the beginning. In the beginning. In the creation story, we see God creating everything, including man and woman, in a perfect garden paradise. And God saw, and it was good. You see, in this place, Adam and Eve had it pretty good. They got the trees, they got the animals, they got each other, they were naked. But best of all, in this garden, they had peace with God, or what the Bible describes as shalom. In this garden, they had peace with themselves. The Bible tells us that they were naked without shame. And in this garden, they had peace with each other. When Adam first sees Eve, he describes her as bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. You see, this garden, it is a paradise in which all of creation lives in perfect intimacy and harmony. But then there comes that stupid snake. In a very early plot twist, Adam and Eve disobey God by eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But what's really interesting here is the language that the Bible uses when Eve sees the fruit of the tree. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 6 it says, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye. So let's be clear, the woman saw and it was good. And if we remember, this is exactly the language that was used to describe God just a few chapters earlier. And what the writer is trying to communicate here is that sin is born when man tries to take the place of God. We become vulnerable to sin the minute we decide that we know better than God what is and what is not good for us. And because Adam and Eve put themselves in the place of God, sin was introduced into the world. And where there was once perfect harmony and intimacy and peace, there is now brokenness. After they sin, Adam and Eve experience a brokenness with God. The Bible tells us that they hid from him as he was looking for them in the garden. They experience a brokenness with themselves. The Bible tells us that now they are ashamed of their nakedness and they make coverings for themselves. And there is a brokenness with each other. Adam blames Eve. Eve blames the serpent. There's all of this blame and accusation going around. And we see here that the creation that was once living in perfect harmony is now living in isolation and brokenness. So let's fast forward now to Jesus, where he's been betrayed, he's been deserted, arrested, he's faced trial and beatings and mockings, and finally, he is hung on a cross to die. Now we know that Jesus had to do this in order to save us from our sins. But in doing it, Jesus was doing so much more than just taking on the physical punishment that we deserved. In the Gospels, we read that on the cross, Jesus cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, on the cross, Jesus is taking our brokenness with God. Before he's led to the cross, we read that he's stripped naked and he's publicly shamed. And in doing that, Jesus is taking our brokenness with self. And on his way to the cross, people are hurling blame and accusations at him. And in that moment, Jesus is taking our brokenness with each other. You see, just a couple minutes ago, we talked about how sin entered the world when man took the place of God. But sin exited the world when God took the place of man, when Jesus took 
our brokenness. And on the cross, Jesus takes every aspect of that brokenness so that we and all of creation can have a chance to once again live in that perfect intimacy and peace and harmony that we read about in Genesis. We were not meant to live in brokenness with ourselves or with others and especially not with God. We were meant to live in harmony with all of creation and especially with its creator. Jesus died to restore that harmony. He died to restore that peace. Jesus died to restore our intimacy with God. On the cross, Jesus didn't just take our punishment, but he took on our brokenness so that all of us could finally experience wholeness. Thank you, as always, for watching this seven-minute sermon. I hope it encouraged you. If it did, I hope you will please share it. Also, with today being Good Friday, that means there's a pretty big day coming up on Sunday. So I'm just saying, make sure to tune into this channel Sunday morning, because you might find yourself a very special video. Thank you all for watching. Happy Good Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, give the video a like, and also, keep being awesome.